Hi and welcome. This video is uh, going to uh, go through all of the QuickBooks settings that we have in SI 2015 and uh, these settings relate to how items are created over in QuickBooks and um, how estimates and purchase orders are sent over to QuickBooks. So we'll start by going uh, up here to the start button, go to setup and control panel. And if you scroll down a little bit out here, you'll see that there's a QuickBooks settings button here. Double click that and that will open up this form and this is what we're going to go through here. If you have not already done so, the first thing you're going to want to do is to map your accounting file path. And this is the path to your QuickBooks company file. Uh, it doesn't have to be on your local machine, it could be on a server on your network, but uh, you're just going to hit this little browse button here and then you'll browse out and find where your QuickBooks file is located. And then of course then you'll make the um, connection to QuickBooks. Um, you may have already done that, if not that's covered in another video. We only support uh, three different regions of QuickBooks, that's uh, US, Canada, or the UK, so you'll pick your region. And then, um, this is a big step here, is deciding whether you're going to do inventory or non-inventory items over in QuickBooks. Now regarding uh, System Integrator 2015, um, as far as our functionality goes, uh, our software does not care whether you choose inventory or non-inventory as your default here. Uh, there's also service in the list. Uh, this is usually not a default though. But what will affect um, this choice of inventory or non-inventory will be the item format down here. So we're going to look down at this here for the uh, three fields that you have. There's actually six because there's a, a length in there. But um, you can build a hierarchy of um, items in QuickBooks. Maybe that's not the best way to say it. You can make your item numbers be hierarchical uh, inside of QuickBooks. And I'll show you what I mean by that. The default here is uh, manufacturer as uh, item format field one, and there's 30 characters um, set. And the second uh, item format field being the model number, um, and then 30 characters. So what this item format is for, actually, is for creating items over in QuickBooks. Every uh, product that you add to a project inside of System Integrator 2015 and you want to push over to QuickBooks will need to be either linked to an existing QuickBooks item or um, a brand new one will be created. And uh, you'll get to pick your accounts and all that. Um, but this will be the format. And again, this is just the default one here, um, manufactured model. And I'll show you what that looks like over in QuickBooks. So here in the item list of QuickBooks, you'll see that there's the manufacturer name here and then um, tabbed in beneath it are the model numbers. So that was that format um, that we just saw first 30 characters of the manufacturer name and then the model number being the sub item of. So if you open up one of these actually in QuickBooks, you'll see that uh, this is marked as a sub item of. And um, why this matters, um, the format, it's obviously personal preference, how you want the items to be created over in QuickBooks and how you want them to appear. But um, if you're using the sub item of, which means more than one field to identify a product um, that has this um, look to it, um, then you are committing to all inventory parts or all non-inventory parts. You can't have a mix when you're using the sub item of. So that's a QuickBooks rule. So uh, you've got to follow that as well. But um, you're not uh, committed in our software to pushing over. Um, two levels if you don't want to. You could go down to one level uh, if you choose to. Okay, let's go back to uh, SI 2015 and reopen these QuickBooks settings here. And um, so what you have a choice of here, if you wanted to uh, go down to a single level, you could of course clear this out. I'll show you the choices in here. Um, the fields that can be pushed over are uh, manufacturer, model, category, um, and part number. And of course, there's a none here if you want to get rid of it and just do one level. Or as you can see, you could do up to three. Uh, so for instance, if you are comfortable with the sub item of uh, format, maybe you want to first see your uh, items in QuickBooks organized by category, uh, then manufacturer, then uh, model. And we'll put 30 characters here because that's the uh, limited QuickBooks. If you save that um, and then push an item over to QuickBooks, I'll show you what it looks like. And here in QuickBooks, you can see um, here's the category followed by the manufacturer followed by the model number. So that was that three level example. So um, once again, anytime you're using sub item of, you're locked into all inventory or all 
uh, non-inventory. So your choice if you want to use that uh, multi-level or not. If you're not using it, you'll likely just use uh, the model number or the part number as just the single field that you push over. All right, back over here to SI. And um, real quickly, let's go over to the catalog. And uh, just because I've been mentioning the part number field, um, let me open a product here. This is the uh, field I'm referring to. So the fields can go over uh, manufacturer, model, category, or this part number. Um, some of our users use this uh, for an internal SKU that they have. Others use it for a vendor number, or it might be the actual manufacturer part number that you have to order by. But uh, your choice if you want to use that or not. And uh, while I'm here in the Product Explorer, uh, we don't have to go back to the uh, control panel to deal with QuickBooks settings. We can just launch that here and continue um, talking about formatting. And uh, another setting that um, deals with uh, products being created are what um, price types do you create and synchronize to over in QuickBooks. And you have um, up to three levels of price types. In my case, I'm only using one of them. Um, but here, if you manage your product price types, you may be using more than one, and you can choose which one you want to transfer and, and synchronize to QuickBooks. Go ahead and close that out. So um, now back up here to the estimate section. This is where you can um, choose. Maybe you don't even want to push over individual items. So what was just shown, maybe you want to push over um, a single item to represent um, what's in an estimate. So that's this option here. Um, the default is, this is set to false, so every item would push over to the estimate. But you can choose to push over them as, as one item. It'll combine um, everything, like the price, into one entity. And you'll get to name that here. See where it says product. So this is the uh, product item name. Um, so if you'd like to do that, you would set this to true. And then if you want to change the name, in case you don't want to say product, you want to say something else like uh, equipment, um, we'll go ahead and do that. And I'll show you a uh, what this looks like over inside of QuickBooks. Save this. Here in QuickBooks, you can see an example uh, of an estimate that was pushed over showing every individual line item here. Um, and then if we go to this one, this is that summarized one where it put the item over here as equipment gives it a brief description and here's the items and that is the difference between using that setting and not using that setting. We'll go back over to uh, system integrator here and uh, pull open our QuickBooks settings. So um, again there's that option. You could also do the same thing with labor. You could send it over as um, one item and um, maybe even change the spelling here like to that if that is your region. Um, and again, it'll just push over uh, one item. Um, there's a couple more labor settings to talk about here too, like this phase labor item format. Um, when you set this one above to true, um, that pretty much eliminates this setting down here. So uh, for now, let's go ahead and set this to uh, false. And uh, we, we can leave that spelling change there. But um, this list here, there's three options. You can export labor as one item, which is similar to the one right above that setting there, where uh, labor will go over as just one line item to a um, uh, estimate in QuickBooks. Or you could break it out by each phase. And of course, the phases that I'm referring to are generally in our software rough in, trim, finish, and programming. And then if you really want to get granular, um, you can export each phase and subphase as an item. And in this case, um, our phases have four parts to them if you're using them. Um, and meaning r the rough in phase, there's a, a baseline for base labor, there's miscellaneous management and design. I'll show those in just a second. Um, so there's four sub phases essentially for each phase. So if you're using a job that uh, had rough in trim, finish, and programming, and you're using all four of those sub phases for each one of those phases, uh, you'll get 16 line items for the labor. You'll, it'll break it out uh, for you that much over in QuickBooks. So uh, this is the default. Uh, we're not sure you're going to want to go that granular, or even if you're using subphases in our software. Uh, but a popular setting for this is to either um, export just each phase, so it breaks it out into the, the four or five phases in the job, uh, or just one item. And I'll show you examples of um, all of these in just a second here. We'll quickly just uh, save this setting and uh, uh, run over here and look at phases. So what I was referring to a second ago, 
here are the phases for charging labor per item in the software. So um, this, in my case, if I had a job with all four of these, I could get a list of all four. Or if you are using the base miscellaneous management design here, those are the sub phases that would show up. So um, again, I'll show you an example of some uh, estimates over in QuickBooks with those settings. So here in QuickBooks, uh, this first estimate here, um, this has the labor over as a single item. So here at the very bottom, you can see that there's just the one item for the labor. Um, here's the same estimate uh, pushed over, this time showing the phases that are in um, this project. In this case, there was just finish and trim labor, but it's just showing the phase, not the sub phases. And this one is the very granular one where for the trim phase and the finish phase, it's showing the sub phases as well, the miscellaneous, the management, the design time. Um, there's also another setting that I'll mention here and then go back and show you. Um, it's the short description versus the long description on your estimates. And um, if we, and this is a setting back in the um, system integrator, like I said, I'll show you. But this is uh, short descriptions, this is short descriptions, and this first one is the long descriptions. The long description is the default, so uh, you're likely going to want to change that possibly to the short description. Otherwise, sometimes, depending on what your long description is inside of SI, you may get something like this in your estimate over in QuickBooks. Uh, so that setting that I'm referring to, if we go back here to the uh, Product Explorer, let's go to QuickBooks Settings. And uh, it's down here. Options, use long descriptions. So uh, you can see this. Um, when estimates are created, use the long description. Set to true. You can change that to false. And that's what I did for those uh, two examples a second ago uh, when we were talking about labor. So um, that's a nice option there. Um, there's one more setting really regarding labor. And that is... Um, right here, export labor as items. And the default is false. And this is referring to labor items. So um, normally labor items just get grouped into the phase labor um, and it becomes just the either one big labor line or it'll be broken out by phase as we just demonstrated. Um, labor items don't generally go over as single items and display um, as their own entity inside of the estimate. But if you'd like to do that, you could set that to true. And um, what we're referring to here is if you take a look out in your catalog, you have your uh, managed labor and these are your labor items uh, in the software. And again, if you want these to go over as single items, you can do that. All right, let's go back to the catalog here. QuickBooks and QuickBooks settings. Um, export OFE to estimates. So um, the default here is false. Um, OFE meaning, meaning owner furnished equipment. So um, Again, we generally would not think you'd want to push these over, but uh, the thing about OFE is the labor that's associated with owner furnished equipment, if you've added any, will be pushed over. Um, that's how OFE works. We generally um, you know, don't charge for the product itself, but the labor will still be charged. But if you'd like the item itself to go over um, with its zero value, um, again, it's going to have to be created in QuickBooks, um, depending on your settings there, but we'll push over the OFE item if you'd like. And let me show OFE real quick for those that may not know it pull up a project here and uh, pick any product here like the speaker if this was already there a pre-existing in-wall speaker on um, the price type here you always have the option of marking something as owner furnished equipment and um, in this case well, I don't even have a price on this in this job but here let's put a price I don't know what this costs so I'm guessing just throwing that in there um, as soon as you mark this as owner furnished equipment it'll zero out the price but it keeps the half an hour of finished labor assigned to this so that's what I was referring to. It'll still charge labor, uh, but that's an OFE item. And now back here to the QuickBooks settings. Um, if we take a look, uh, some other options here are just overrides for the default names that are going to be exported uh, to QuickBooks. If you're using um, any of our price adjustments, there's three of them in the software. There's the product adjustment, the miscellaneous parts adjustment, the labor adjustment. Those are percentages that you can add to a project. Um, based off of the top two equipment and the bottom one labor. Um, those will go over um, possibly as separate line items. Um, that's this setting down here. Price adjustments on separate line items. The default being true, um, these would create their own line items at the end of your estimate over in QuickBooks. Um, if you set this to uh, false, though, um, that 
then whatever you put here won't matter. They're not going to go over as separate line items. Um, the adjustments will just be rolled into the price of each item that goes over to QuickBooks. So uh, you have your preferences there on how those push over. And uh, let me show you the settings I'm talking about here for these price adjustments if you're not familiar. Uh, let's see. Under your control panel is where you can globally set those. Uh, but since we have a project open here, let's go look within this project. Under your settings tab, um, there is a price adjustments option here. In this case, not being used, but this is where you would set the percentages if you wanted to add a product adjustment or miscellaneous uh, parts adjustment or a labor adjustment, either positive or negative. You could add a discount this way with a, a negative percent here. But uh, those are the settings that we were referring to uh, in QuickBooks. So uh, back here to the product explorer, Let's pull this back open once again. Um, just a few more settings to um, discuss here and we'll be done. Um, the purchase order options here. Um, oh, I missed one, didn't I? Miscellaneous items. Miscellaneous items are also those entities that are within projects that you can add. Uh, the untaxed items. Um, again, this is just deciding if you're going to, um, what you want to call that over in the QuickBooks estimate. Uh, sorry about that. Let me, let's show that. Let's pull up a project here. Uh, miscellaneous items, of course, being these. Uh, there are items that you add to a project that are not in your catalog. Uh, I don't know if they're already in this job, but we'll add one. Say, um, this is going to be you know, travel time that we charge. And the unit price will just say it's going to be 200 bucks of travel time for the entire project, all the back and forth. Um, you can put a description here. Um, you know, technician travel time. And if you charge daily, you could use quantities here if you'd like versus a unit price that would calculate for you. Um, but again, those get added to a project. They do show up on proposals, uh, but they're just not a part of your catalog. Um, if you have these here, they will get pushed to QuickBooks because that is adding money to the project. So that was that setting that we were just uh, talking about. Okay, back here. Now we can talk about purchase orders. And the purchase order settings here are pretty straightforward. Um, here we've got the OFE option again. So again, owner furnished equipment. Um, it's very unlikely you're going to want to push that to a purchase order since you're not purchasing them and no labor needs to be charged on that purchase order. Um, so um, if for some weird reason you wanted to put this as true, you could. Uh, this is the only real setting here is the purchase order, item order status. And um, if you take a look here, these are the um, order statuses that we have inside of our software. And what we'll do is we'll mark the products inside of the project, whether it's been ordered or not. Um, as you can see, you can manage your order statuses here. And um, you may have changed this word from ordered to something else. Um, so you'll be able to set that um, here. And that's, again, when you push a purchase order over to QuickBooks from our software, we'll just mark the products as ordered. For those not familiar with that, let's pull open this project here. And I'll open up, a, again, any product here. Inside of a product, there is an order and install um, tab here that marks the order status, if it's been ordered, what order number it would go in. This is automatically also fills in from pushing to QuickBooks, and then the order date here. Uh, but this is the flexible setting here again. Maybe you've created your own list here and you want it to show a certain status. And last but not least, um, for QuickBooks settings, is this uh, add package name to description and estimates. It's set to be false by default if you want to set that true. Um, what this is going to do um, is put the package name after the description of the products um, that push over. So we do not push packages to QuickBooks. Uh, a package in our software um, links the individual items over to individual items in QuickBooks or creates those items in QuickBooks, but we don't create a package to a package. So this is just um, if you wanted the description to have, again, appended at the end, the name of the package. And I'll show you a quick example of that. Um, we'll set this to true first, and I'll show you what that looks like uh, over in QuickBooks. And uh, here in QuickBooks, you can see that the description is here and then in parentheses is the name of um, the package that was sent over. In this case, it was Noble Speakers Alon Touchpad was the name of the package over in uh, SI 2015. And uh, those are your QuickBooks uh, settings. Uh, hopefully that explains these to you. Um, and of course you can play around with these and, and test out which one's gonna work for you. And um, everybody does have their own preferences on how um, they want the estimates and POs to uh, you look over in QuickBooks and how especially items are created. So um, this is certainly worth a discussion with whoever your bookkeeper or your accountant is or whoever's running your QuickBooks.